Cool greetings from downtown Pueblo, Colorado. We're at Historic Runyon Sports Complex. My name is JJ Valentine, along with Tracy Rink, Tony Wright. We'll introduce our guest here in just a little bit. And from SoCoTicket.com, it's time to talk a little bit of sports. So, Tony, introduce yourself. A little bit about you, my man. Let's see. What do you know, everybody? The Tone Men, or Tony Wright, you know, started back here in 1991. Used to broadcast our guest games and thousands more. Uh, been doing this a long time, and we're happy to be back. But uh, from Denver, Colorado, went to school, graduated what was then University of Southern Colorado, and one of the sports guys has been doing it a long time, and we're certainly happy to be back. And our man in the middle, Tracy Ring. <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Well, I grew up in Pueblo, graduated from Centennial, went to see you in Boulder when their football team was really good. Not the case anymore. Uh, <laughs> and. I've since I covered uh, sports for since 1993. I worked at the Public Chieftain for 16 years. Now I'm in the rodeo business at the PRCA, but I still love prep sports and uh, enjoy doing this. It's a lot of fun. Appreciate being on the show, JJ. And I'm really missing the big black step steps that he normally wears <laughs> and the boots, but he's little wearing shorts. Little tip of the resistor. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy and course, talk. And of course, the lady behind the camera today has been in the the broadcast world since she was 15 years old. That's She's right. been a midday host, uh, a music director, a webmaster, and in promotions all in the world of broadcasting. That's Chelsea Lynn. She's awesome. My name is JJ Valentine. Been doing the radio world for almost 40 years. A combination of radio slash TV sports play by play. Everything from morning shows to sports directors, production director, and a whole lot more. Uh, been doing it for a long, long time, and it's been a lot of fun. And now, if we could introduce our very first guest. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome to the microphone our man, Mr. Ryan Goddard, the head coach of Rebel South Boys. Coach, good to see you. How are you? Hey, guys, I'm great. You know, it's he awesome never ages. He does. He looks uh, He never ages. He looks like he did in 2001 when he took the state championship uh, in basketball. I wish. <laughs> hey, man, this man has won a state championship as a player and as a coach. And as a coach. And you know what? And he's also gotten lots of accolades from last year, the last couple of years. Uh, not only do we get to work with Ryan as a player, coach, broadcast guy, he's also become a broadcaster. And so I got to tell you, thank you for making me look good on TV. Oh, I don't lots know of lots of people going on, man. That guy makes you look really good. <laughs> JJ, so I got to appreciate you, man. You got to ice, ice the backup after those three games. I think. Just had to put it on. You carried me on your back. That was a lot of fun, though, man. What a blast those three those three games were. Absolutely. Hey, before we talk about the makeup of your team, Coach, uh, you had a scrimmage last night. How'd it go? What'd you take away from it? Oh, you know, it was good. I mean, we had Eric had to come down and, uh, you know, we had a competitive scrimmage, did some different situations, and got our guys out. I mean, we've, we've been in camp since August 1st. We elected to go August 1st as part of our team camp. And, um, it's, it's running from there. Um, but... Uh, you know, so we've been in camp and going against ourselves since August 1st. And last time was the first opportunity to go against somebody else. It was, it was nice to see somebody in a different color. And, um, you know, our guys are tired of going, going after each other a little bit. Getting little bit. And, um, so it was good to, to get out and go against somebody else. I think that was great. Just watch our guys compete. Uh, that was fun. And, and just really get ready for you know, what we have ahead, which is, you know, starts next week at the old Hornets Nest. One thing yeah. I want to ask, talk about the makeup of a league. Things have changed, you know, the past, what, five, six, seven years. We've had the Old South Central League, all the Pueblo teams. You had Durango a few years, and uh, now that's mixed up. Talk about who's in your league and what are your expectations and why the change came about. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think what they did is the state. They tried to balance things a little bit uh, geographically. And, you know, so we split the public schools. We've been in that at all Pueblo League the last couple of years. And you know, had, a, had a mix in with Durango and, and Canyon. But... Um, you know, it, it's going to be good. It's going to be competitive. I think it's going to balance things out for, for leagues across the state and all classifications. And hopefully, you know, at the end of the day, they get the right 16 teams in the playoffs. And, um, you know, I think non-league will be a huge factor. But, you know, we're looking, to our, looking forward to playing our, our league schedule. But we got, we got a heck of a slate coming before then, which we're, you know, it's going to be a challenge and, and really put some things to the test. Of course, with the rankings and everything like that, PowerPoints. I'm assuming you want a you want a tougher non-conference schedule, correct? It's, yeah. In some respect. Sure. I mean, I think you know, one, you want to play teams that um, you know it, it's going to be competitive each right. and every week. And you know, where, wherever you are, if you're you know in the top five teams or the bottom five teams, you want to play teams that you can compete against each and every week. 
and I think the, the league does that a little bit. Um, but, you know, the schedule of non-league, I think, is important. And, you know, for us, we want to... Got special yeah. messages. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. secret. There you go. Secret code. Uh, you know, I think you, should, you want to play teams that are, are like you. And, uh, you know, for us, I think, you know, hopefully we're... we're are where we think we are, and we're going to put that to the test. But um, you know, it starts off with a big one. With, uh, more secret messages. Yeah, more secret yeah. messages. A lot of questions there. <laughs> I um, love it. But uh, you know, it starts off with a tough test to count. Right. You know, and that's what we're looking for. And coach, before we talk about the makeup of the team, let me thank a few of our sponsors here. Before we go any further, we'd like to thank Joe DeLeo, Subway Stores of Publix. He's got four locations, and of course, uh, Benefits Broker Insurance. Steve Shirley, Dave Becchio, and their entire team. They've been supportive of what we do here in Southern Colorado. Those guys are great guys. All the people that we make mention of are so good in giving a lot back to our community. Now, Jody and Steve Shirley can both shoot jumpers. Oh, oh boy, and they, they can swing the golf club too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Steve, Steve was a defensive specialist at then University of Southern Colorado and Joe Folder was a coach. <laughs> but when you see Steve Shirley, ask him about Ralph Rivers. <laughs> yeah, Ralph Rivers. <laughs> hey, I can't forget about my man Dave Vecchio. Love you, Ralph. Vecchio. Oh, so. Without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. All right, so let's talk about the makeup of the team. Let's stop. Talk with its skilled guys. I mean, your quarterback. quarterback. Who's going to be that guy this quarterback year? Quarterback is a man in his system. Absolutely. Who's going to throw well, a rock? You know, I mean, uh, I think I'm really proud of, of, of this kid. You know, Caleb Ortiz is going to be a senior. He's going to be a program kid. Um, you know, playing behind Chase Bell in the last two years. He's, you know, gained some knowledge, but really taking advantage of uh, the reps that he's got. He had a great summer. Uh, really developing into a leader himself. Uh, you know, Caleb would be the, be the guy that, you know, calls – Calls the plays and, and makes things happen for us. Um, got some experience last year. You know, we lost Chase early for a couple games, uh, which I think will will pay dividends. And I've seen his first action. Sure. Um, but the growth that he's put on this summer has been has been really fun to watch. I'm just really excited about what he's got going on. You know, other skill guys. We have most of our skill guys back from last year. Uh, you know, made some adjustments here and there with you know some positions that really bad, but one of our strength I, strengths I think this year is you know, our our guys on the outside. Uh, Mateo Esquivel, Ray Aragon, Ray J. Aragon, I should say, uh, Nathan Martinez, uh, Ryan Grisham. You know, those guys are all capable uh, ball catchers. Uh, Armando, Armando Manuel will be a new face, uh, but has had a really good camp. And then on you know, running back, we got Mike Jaguar back. we got a new face in Nick Oliva. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a, a one-two punch there, I think. Uh, at least that's what we're looking for. Uh, and they're two different style backs. You know, Elijah's a little bit smaller. Now, before we talk special teams, and of course these guys will have some questions for you as well, um, one of the things that I want to talk about, and seeing the Ryan Goddard teams that just have developed over the years, team speed. You do some work in the offseason to get these guys ready to hit the gridiron running. How fast is this team going to be this year? You know, I mean, I think we've got some speed at, at all levels, um, especially I think defensively we can really This summer, and you know, we got a shout out. You know, uh, we worked with Tony Harrison and Carl Lewicani, and he came around and did a great job with our guys. Uh, it was a breath of fresh air for I think for our guys. It was a breath of fresh air for me. We got some new things going. Uh, he did a he did a fantastic job you know, on the field and in the weight room. Like on the field in the weight room. Uh, I think it's really really starting to show up now, especially when we're talking about the tournament conditioning. We just never know. You get to week one, you're going to find out in the third quarter <laughs> if you're in any type of shape. That's right. And, you know, and, and most teams aren't. Uh, hopefully we are. And we're ready to roll. All right, before Tony gets to the next question, let me thank the Taco Factory and RV Center. They're at 2010 Highway 50 West in Pueblo. They've got a motto. they got a saying that when the going gets tough, the tough go camping. And, of course, let's go back, digress to the COVID years, all right? It was really good to just get away, and Jan said a lot of people did get away in a lot of their RVs. Find them online at topperfactory.com. Awesome. You know, let's go back to the past a little bit. You graduated from South in 02, correct? 01. 01, yep. that's right, state champion. You know, I think one of the guys who had a big influence on you, obviously you played for Mark Herring as well, outstanding coach. You guys had some really good teams, and subsequently after you left, but... Talk about the influence of Dave Lockett. I mean, Dave Lockett was a 
a, a basketball coach, a great basketball coach in South Carolina, the greatest to ever come out of Pueblo. But he always told me that he used uh, football, he used a defensive coach of football, and he implemented a lot of that in the way he played basketball. And I like the, some of the things that you do that kind of remind me of what he did. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that I was just really extremely blessed to play for the guys I played with. You know, so when you look at you know my experience with the coaches that I played for, John Lennart track, you know, GPSA Hall of Fame. Uh, obviously, Dave Lockett in basketball, GPSA Hall of Fame. Uh, Mark Herring in, in football, GPSA Hall of Fame. And then, you know, obviously, the first introduction I got to South High School sports was you know, our freshman football coach, Jerry Cisneros, who GPSA Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Uh, so Great you talk about four guys there that, uh, you know, really influenced my life different ways, um, you know, and I think they all had different roles and, and the way they did things differently, but they all had an impact on me, and, you know, obviously I spent a lot of time with Mark as a player, as an assistant coach, and I was fortunate enough to step in that role, you know, Dave Lockett, you know, growing up was, was the man, and, um, you know, someone I always looked up to and would run through that brick wall. And, Everybody uh, said that to play yeah, for Yeah, absolutely, um, you know, and John Lennart did so many things for me, and, and Preparing me for uh, you know other sports, but preparing me for you know being a good person, being a good man, and a, as did all of them. You know, as did all of them. Put that on that. But you know, I think one of the things that I have taken away from all of them is just how, how you put on the horseshoe, how you compete, um, and how you play hard. And, you know, I think one of the things that our guys are always you know taught is you know we're going to play hard, and that was something that you know Coach Locker really impacted me and you know, impressed me. I got to say this real quick before we get to him. I never forget that state championship season of 01. I was covering another game. It might have been Central or Centennial or East or somebody. I can't remember. But this, he was the then, I believe, a 17 or 18 year old kid. He's sitting on the front row because I think they played next. And he kind of cocks his head to the side and looks at me and goes, Hey, uh, Mr. Wright. Uh, how far do you think we could go? I'm like, well, I don't know, you know. The guards might be a little suspect, you know. And of course, the guard was him and Craig, and uh, Scott Law was the other guard, his dad and Craig. And, uh, man, they, they, did, they went all the way and won a state championship. And I'm not trying to hog it, but that was one of the most incredible runs I have ever seen. You guys were the number, I believe, the number nine seed, and Mitchell was number one, and you took it to him. And that game went back and forth, and uh, uh, Baker, who was just a great, uh, was a Brad, Brad Baker was a great, great player, multi-sport athlete. He gets the rebound, throws it down to Danny Zufall, he cocks it back and dunks. Well, you guys win that game. I remember Mitchell in tears. Then the night after that, you play Adam City with Lenny Miles went to see you. Just a studded all-star team. You wore them out. And then you beat Sierra for the state championship, man. That had to have been. And the reason I'm bringing that up is that Alfred Williams, I was listening to him on a talk show. He won a Super Bowl with the Broncos, the national championship at CU. But he said the most thrilling thing he ever did was winning the state high school championship when he did down in Houston. That was the thrill of a lifetime, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, those are just memories that, that, you, that you have forever. And I mean, I couldn't tell you the score of the single game. Uh, you know, we can talk about moments, but just the time that we got to spend with our teammates and the way that we could be. I mean, those, we, we grew up together. I mean, that was a great thing. I had seven or eight centers on that squad. Um, you know, we grew up playing together, competing together, competing against each other. And, um, you know, just so much fun and, and so memorable. And, you know, guys, who, you know, I run into Brad Baker and Danny Medina and those guys, you know, to this day. And, you know, those are things that, that we discuss. You know, obviously, you know, Zach Brockman, you know, being my brother. And, um, you know, we, we, they may come up in conversation every now and again. But uh, just moments in life and memories that were created because we had relationships and, and grew up. And, and, you know, we weren't very good, but we played hard. Played um, well together as a know, team, we though. We played really well as a team, and, and we just we relied on each other and believed in each other. And, um, you know, maybe a team that overbelieved and found a way to get it done. You know, now, since Tony went there, now winning that state championship as a player, can you even compare that as a coach now? You know, I think they were different. Sure. Um, they're extremely different. I Speak think, to that because yeah, that I, has to be just amazing when you talk about moments. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, I think that there are, there are you know, four or five moments that, that stand out in my, you know, in my life. Obviously, you know, the day I was married, the day my daughters were born. You bet. Um, you know, the football state championship, the basketball state championship. I mean, those are the greatest moments that we've had. And but they're, you know, they're memories right now. But um, yeah, I think when you win as a coach, it's different because you're such a, it's about servant leadership, uh, it's about
It's about serving others. And, and that one, football, you know, we've never played for a state championship, let alone one time. Absolutely. Uh, and you're playing in, in mile high, and uh, you, you walk out there, and the stadium's empty before the game, and you're like, you look around, and, it still gives me chills this day because you, I got him as yeah, well because I, mean, I was just, walking down there with you. Tracy and I called that game. Yeah, I mean, you're just in that, <laughs> that huge stadium. You're used to seeing 70,000 people in there, and there's not because you're the only person in there at that moment. Um, but I, I just, you know, it was about 65 guys um, and, and their success and their hard work and everything that they sacrificed to, to do uh, to get to that moment and then to be able to, to finish that off and, and play a sport where. You rely on so many different people and so many different roles to deal with the guys we did it with. You know, my coaching staff was so special, and those players were so special. And, uh, you know, again, just relationships. You know, from that group of guys that they weren't, they weren't going to let each other down. And I think it's coaches have done the same thing. All right, before I talk more sponsors, Tracy, you got anything for the coach before I, I, I we talk I would just speak on sponsors. that one thing, obviously, from the state championship game, and I know we're going down memory lane here, but what's it like as a coach? Because I know the Pine Creek coach is probably one of the most arrogant human beings alive at different times. And he, he, when he goes to a matchup with his 5'9 guy who he thought he was going to win the Heisman in college, I can't remember the little running back, but he goes up against Marcel, sure. and he's going one-on-one. -on -one. You had to think, my gosh, is this... This has got to be a dream because there was no way the guy was going to match up. <laughs> not only beat him once, he beats him twice. Yeah. And I mean, it's, and I'm not just saying that's the reason you won the game, but it, obviously, as a play caller and everything that you guys had planned, and sure. you saw that the matchup, almost like the arrogance that he had to match up that way, and you knew you had a guy, obviously, who might even have been up all town in Barbie. Like he, he was that guy. He was what, 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 was, what, 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 what was that like when you walked out there and saw that game plan and pulled in front of your eyes? You, you know, I mean, there were it was a it was a for us, we had a lot of weapons on that right. squad. I yes, mean, you did. look back, obviously, you had Marcel was a 4 of the years playing in Texas right. Stadium. Um, you had Thomas Penunzio on right. the slot, who's at Colorado State. Right. You had Jeremy Cody um, at tight end, who went to CU and now is at Arizona State, high jumping over seven feet. Um, you had Jesse Anzar on the other side that, you know, is playing, you know, college football at Nebraska Kearney. You had Steve Brock in the backfield. Um, you had, who was a 1600 yard rusher, and, right. which people like, we don't, no one remembers that Steve Rock was a 16, you know, right. back to back 1600 yard rusher, yeah, you know, back to back seasons, <laughs> um, and averaged at like seven yards a carry. Right. Um, and then you had Zach Coslino, you know, 48 touchdown passes. Right, right, right. Um, so, it, and, and, and you know, there were one, one of two ways that you could attack us. You could try and, you know, double Marcel and, and right. take him away. Um, but you, you were going to give something up to those other four guys, and it was just a matter of numbers. Um, so for us, it was always like we had two game plans. You know, one if they doubled Marcel, and, and one if they played him straight up. Um, and every time someone played him straight up, you know, we, we tried to make him pay. And every time you know someone doubled Marcel, we tried to make him pay with everyone else. Uh, and that was just a total team and, and those types of guys. But you know, those guys were all a pleasure to coach, and they're so fun to watch now. And, so fun to, to be able to communicate with and you know, still have the, still have those relationships. And, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to, to catching you know Texas State at Nevada. Uh, you know, catching CSU in the Big House. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got another guy up there now too. Who's you know hopefully you know step in and fill a role eventually. Uh, and Chase Bella, but just really excited to, to see those guys and continue success. Yeah. Very well said. Let's thank a few more of our sponsors, and then we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit about the defense, special teams, and a wrap up with the coach because I know we got to get him going. It's Saturday. They had a game last night, and we'll get him moving on here. We want to thank Pueblo Insurance, Deborah okay. and her team. We appreciate you. Let me break in the gear here. Uh, Park West <laughs> Dental and Vision. We appreciate you. And of course, Bay's Meat Market, Bounty and Yield. Catch them on the south side of town. They do it. It's all their. It's all Colorado grown. They got beef, pork, chicken. Whole works and they do a great job with it as well. All right, uh, we do want to thank State Farm Insurance agent Melissa Ariaga D'Angelo. When you go back to that state championship team, Missy is a true, I, I, I like to call her an icon in this community because any of these you need, you call her, oh, I'm in. What do you need? I can help. She's that girl and has great kids as well. So you can speak to Missy. Uh, who's a huge backer of the MIBs, the men in black. Yeah, I speak to all three of them. The kids go to, to Park West Dental and we see Dr. Julie. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Bay's Meat Market, have you, have you gotten a better ribeye anywhere? No, I mean, no. Uh, and then, obviously, Missy, is just, she's salt to the earth. 
Yeah. Kids both played in our program. Uh, one's coaching currently, one just graduated. Uh, she was a part of our program for, for the last eight years. We're going to keep that rolling. But just, just a great person. And anything you need, as we all say, I mean, Missy will get it done. She'll take care of you. Um, you know, I, I love Missy. Her, her slogan is, here for game day and every day, community means everything. That's and it. that speaks volumes. And she man. is there every day. She's <laughs> Big there every time. Day. Big time. All right, Coach, talk about, uh, let's, before we talk about your defense, special teams are always key. You and I talk about that. Tony, Tracy, we've always He had a kicker that one team that went to the semifinals. What was that kicker's name? You, you got, your kickoff team had it the easiest I've ever seen, but not a kick was never returned. <laughs> And he pays extra. With that said, he pays extra attention to a special team. Yeah, little absolutely. things make a big difference. Back in 2013, that's when we had Nate Spinuzzi. That's there right. You know. Yeah, Nate Spinuzzi could power clean your house and then, uh, you know, squat your, you know, car and your house and all those good things. But uh, he put everything in the back of the end zone. Uh, you know, and that was a that was a blessing. You know, we had Nate Spinuzzi as a, as a kicker, we had Terry Craig as a punter. I mean, you talked about just two guys. That, Absolutely. Uh, you know, special teams for us, and, and we talk about it all the time. We, we put a heavy stress on it. Well, first of all, the first thing is you're not a starter on offense. Okay. Uh, and you know, we try and get our kids. To play, you know, what a momentum shifting moment. Both things covered. You know, our returns we've been running for 24, 25 years now. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, yeah. love the coach, man. Uh, God bless him. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful football coach, what a wonderful mentor. Another GPSCA guy that had a, mm. a huge impact Absolutely. on my life. You bet. Uh, but you talk about the return game, but we put you know special emphasis on a return game because it's high school football, and most teams don't have a guy that takes a win. So, uh, and you know, there were years we had seven or eight returns, either punts and kicks. And, we always talk about our guys about, you know, special teams matter a lot, whole lot early, and they matter a whole lot late. And we've won some games early in the season that maybe we should have won because we made a play special teams. Uh, you can look back to the 2017 state championship. We're up we're 14 to the 7. Yes. Thomas Penanzio gets one and goes 99. <laughs> uh, I listen to you guys making you know, it wrong. Yes, sir. You know, obviously we didn't kick PAT very well that day, but we did enough in, in our middle. Faces to really make some, really make some plays. Um, you know, uh, we're excited about what we have. We had a, a kicker, soccer player, junior, Braden uh, You know, the kid's amazing. He's, he's doing, he's, he's running cross country. So now he's away from rock, cross country. He runs the football, uh, gets his, you know, his kicks and his work in. We get our work in at that time, and then he runs, keeps going, and goes to soccer practice. So you're talking about a kid that's playing three varsity sports in one season um, and carrying a. Uh, Four point plus GPA, uh, just a solid, solid kid. Uh, and I would say out. special. Yeah, <laughs> special. I just wanted to come out and do it this year. You know, it's his first year out for us, but I want to be a part of it. We're excited to have him. And, you know, we're excited about our return guys. We're excited about our return teams. And, you know, I think Mateo Escobar had a punt return for a touchdown last year. And, uh, and those are the things that we you know, we talk about hidden yards. You know, we talk about where we get hidden yards and special teams and have goals and all those things. So. You know, we're excited about what we have there and, and looking forward to you know continuing, or continuing the traditions and, and the legacy that was established before us and the importance of the special team game. I know that you know every time we get out there and we coach kick return and punt return, you know, there's one guy I think of, but you know, that was a guy who taught it to me and Denny still yeah, Absolutely. All right, talk defense. about what the key cogs are going to be defensively for the Colts because, you know, that's what it takes to hold the opponents down. The year they won state championship, they held that explosive uh, – uh, Pine Creek Pine team at 13 points, correct? Yes, indeed. Yep. Gave up some yards here and there, but what it matters, you get you get your defense. Your defense a you've been a little few times, but it gets it done. But your defense has been so underrated over the years, and that, that's really you know you got such a power, high potent offense, but your defense just has some great moments over the years. Absolutely, they just make them big plays. And I think when we talk about defense, the past 27 years, you know, uh, we haven't changed this year. Uh, good friend, mentor to me. Matt Graham, Beef Graham, you know, retired from football. Uh, he kind of passed the torch to Aaron Hernandez, who was the guy that played for us. Oh. Uh, so, you know, 27 years, you got that Beef Graham. That kid's on a lot of our highlight reels. 
It yeah. absolutely is. <laughs> uh, you know, 27 years, you know, Beef was the guy, and now he's passed the torch to, to Aaron, and, you know, looking forward to seeing, you know, what Aaron does. Aaron's a fantastic teacher. He's creative. He's innovative. Uh, he's energetic. Uh, added some defensive coaches, one in particular, Gerard Lacey, from the college, from Tisha Bubble, Great the national time, champion. Yep. Uh, so looking forward to, to his influence. Uh, we get a you know an old hat back and Marshall Vanderpuff a little bit. And we've got our guys, you know, Cody Prowse, Scott Lane, Isaiah Palacio. Uh, you know our guys that have been in the program that, that know the standards and what we you know, focus on, what our goals are. And, um, you know, so excited about them as coaches and scheme wise and, and how they coach kids and how they care for kids and how they put kids in the best play, you know, position to make plays. Hopefully, um, and then the secondary, I think we've got you know most of our guys back there. Tao and, and Ray and Nate, you know, those those are three big guys that play huge roles for us. Um, you know, at, at linebacker, you know, it'll be a little bit little bit young there, but they're gonna be guys like that play hard and are, are well coached. Um, and then at, at defensive line, I think it starts with Brock Montoya, you know, defensive end position and, and what he can do and how he plays that role. But like we go back, man, they just they run. And, and Brock's the best guy on our team. He's playing the game. We're excited about what he does. You know, when the ball goes away from him and when the ball goes out, he's really, you know, harassing the quarterback and, and just getting after him defensively and playing hard. Man, very well said. Anything else? I want to add, I know we got to get him going. One thing I think that is so important to the success of not just football or basketball, but athletics totally, is how many guys like you and from all the schools come back. You look at your arch rival Pueblo Peaks, you got Tony Valdez and a lot of the Eagles over there. I mean, your school, you've got a lot of guys from that play for South. I mean, you know, obviously Jeff uh, Wilson went back to Centennial to try to get them back going again. I mean, Pueblo Central, you got Chris Cotterman who is a standout at Pueblo Centennial, but a lot of Central guys are there helping him out. Talk about the importance in our teams in Pueblo of how a lot of guys like yourself come back and give back to what you've got and keep the athletics strong. We're, we got two softball games going on right now. Holy Family and your alma mater, Pueblo South, you know, and these fields are packed. There's just so much tradition sure. in the town. And I think it's a tribute to guys like you and other coaches I just mentioned that, that really keeps it going. And I, I think you can go back to you know, the influence that people in our schools have, you know, whether it's a teacher or a coach. Uh, you know, people that influence young people, they want to be a part of it. They want to continue to be a part of it and it means something to them and they're invested in it. Um, you know, I think those are those things are so important. You know, like we have two guys that are on our staff that didn't graduate from South, but you know their roles are huge and they're they're impacting. Them. They're all bought in as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you have that everywhere, but it just it really goes back to you know uh, this is a great example. Last time we had a scrimmage, you know, and I had probably 14 guys that had graduated in the last five years just down on the sidelines, you know, <laughs> and it was like a love night. And it was so awesome, and I love seeing those guys down there, and I love when those guys come back. And, um, yeah, it really speaks to what our coaches do as far as their relationships and, and how they build those, and they want to come back. I mean, there's nothing better than, as a coach for me last night, like, I was fired up. Like, I just watched guy after guy walk in, and they're over there, and they're, you know, not, not just cheering them on, but they're over there coaching them up. You know what I mean? And they're over there just having an influence on, on that, and, and again, kind of passing that torch, but still being invested and being supportive and, and being positive and, and just getting guys to, to, to play to that standard that, that they had to play to and they said they cared about so much. I mean, that was the coolest thing last night. And all that said and done, the kids probably took to that with a big smile oh, on absolutely. their face. Absolutely. I mean, 100 kids on the sideline and, and, and plus 14 alumni guys, it was like, <laughs> it, was, it was different, you know, yeah. it was different. But those 14 guys coming back, was just, it was so awesome. So awesome to see. Um, I mean, I, as, as big as those smiles on kids' face, I think the, the smiles are bigger on our coaches' face. Absolutely. Awesome. Coach Ryan Goddard, Thank always you, a pleasure, yeah, man. Good it. luck. It's man. always Thanks. great to have Appreciate you on. It's great to visit with you all the time, and we'll be doing it again next Friday night when you open up the county hornets. I'm not even going to have you look ahead to that because we'll talk prior to that game. How's it still so good? The, the house that Danny built, That's indeed. Right. You know, he's a pretty gosh darn good badminton player. I can never beat him. I can 
in all my years of county. I don't think county, he ever lost. I don't think he ever did. Either. No, no. <laughs> he just couldn't believe it. He did about Southern County, too, too man. Yeah, yeah, we got some yeah. interesting games over here. And I'm sure next Friday will be no exception. Absolutely. We're going to get on the bus. All right, there man. You go. Coach Goddard, thanks so much for being a part of it. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, man. Good to see you after these years, man. Always great. That's my dog right here. Our next victim, or our next guest, I should say, will be Larry Romero. We're going to talk about talk to him coming up in just a little bit. So we'll have him take to the seat here in just a moment. But we have a moment. We want to thank Spectrum Community Services of Pueblo. That's Mr. Ted Hernandez and company adding more to life. Now, of course, we were talking about his son, Aaron Hernandez, who built our highlight reel with a lot of great defensive plays over the course of his career, not only in high school, but college as well. And uh, again, we thank Azteca Apartments for being a part of it. And they're, of course, one of the main sponsors. Talk about a team that get, or a company that gives back to the community. We've got some baseball programs here that are going to next level stuff. And of course, they're a part of it as well. Park West Dental Division, and of course, Thornton Medical, dedicated to providing flexible and adaptable solutions to help overcome life's little barriers. They're 1951 Lake Avenue. Find them online at ThorntonMed.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome to the microphone the next guest on the show. Uh, the man who's done a lot, he's done it all, and just a great human being. Give it up for Mr. Larry Romero. Coach, good to see you. How are you? Good, JJ. Good morning, guys. Good morning, morning, Coach. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys. Well, first and foremost, congratulations on the new venture you take, take from the dugout to an office. Right. How's that going at Runyon Sports Complex? <laughs> you know, it, initially it was uh, bittersweet. You know, um, I, I love coaching softball. I love uh, being at Central and, and just, just the softball community. You know, I, as I got older and after my tenure, I, I, I became a Pueblo guy, not not a as much a Central guy, but I was more concerned about all of Pueblo softball and, uh, and hoping that, you know, all the programs are doing well. So, um, but it's been good. I. I get the opportunity here at Running Sports Complex to, to reach out to more more athletes. Um, still involved in softball, I, I kind of oversee all the softball programs here at Running Sports Complex, and as well as baseball. You know, we have to be pretty well rounded to, to run this place. You know, so um, but it's been good. It's been good. Uh, but I definitely do miss coaching. I miss being on the third baseline trying to manufacture runs. So. <laughs> I know you do. No doubt about it. Yep. You know, Coach, a, a lot of great things the Central Wildcats have done, especially in your in your softball program. So after all those years of coaching, organizing, because you know, coaches just don't show up on game day and say, all right, let's play ball, and here's the lineup card, and let's go. What do you, how do you use that? in your new position here at Runyon Sports Complex because we'll talk about a lot of the great things that have been going on here. Yeah, and that's, you know, you're so right with that. You know, when I did softball at Central, I, it was a year-round thing for me. It, was, it wasn't a, you know, let's start in, in August and finish up in October. It was year-round, whether we were lifting weights, working out, uh, you know, and then spring and summer stuff was really busy. But but here, here at Runyon Sports Complex, we we're also just as busy you know we have right now currently we have a fall program with baseball that's going on and we have our high school softball and middle school softball that's going to be cranking up here this week um, so it, it's a busy place um, but I guess the passion for softball and baseball is what what keeps me going here um, I, I, I get paid to do this but honestly it's, it's a great place to be um, but being around the game for so long is, is made me better at what I do here. You know, we have some big shoes to fill. Uh, the gentlemen before us were here, Dave Dudley and Charlie Manning, did an amazing job. Amazing. This was, you know, public jam, and we, we, we're trying to get back to that. We want to get back to where everyone feels welcome. Uh, we're offering programs for all levels, uh, whether you're just a beginner, you know, and we don't want to leave anyone out. You know, if you want to play baseball, you want to play softball, you want to come to running, we'll figure out a way to get you to play. Uh, so that's that's the added benefit of, of being here is being able to reach out and, and, and help more players in, in, in the community. And you were speaking to the growth of what Runyon Sports Complex has done. The house right back over here that they do play on back in the 30s. And, you know, when you talk about the way that this complex has grown, going from just a one-diamond baseball park to what it is now to where you're playing eight and under over here on the Pasuto field. You got the Salas field, Corsentino, Diorio, obviously the Nooch and Hobbs field. I mean, the growth here has been amazing over the course of the years. 
And you're absolutely right. And you know, this year we had a record amount of enrollments as far as players and teams. Um, we we had to do something that hadn't been done before. We were playing three baseball games in a night. So we started at 5. The next game started at 6.45, but the last game didn't start until 8.30 p.m. Um, but we had no choice because we had, you know, uh, about a 12% increase in teams and didn't have places for them to play. We also used and leased uh, CSU Pueblo's base, uh, softball field, and we moved our softball players down there, which was good. You know, they had, they had a a nice field to play on, and it was good, but it's still not running sports complex. Absolutely. So uh, we have to do some, we have to get better. Uh, there's some expansion plans in, in, in the future. Um, the one that's going to start immediately is uh, some of the 1A money that we voted on six, seven years ago. Uh, some of that, and this is a political thing, but tranche money has been uh, received, so they're going to start spending some of that money on Hobbs. Uh, we're going to uh, put the netting up. Uh, they're going to move the, the announcer's booth down into the middle of the grandstand, uh, and then they're going to redo the dugout. So there's going to be a lot of, that's supposed to start um, September-ish, maybe October, so uh, we're excited about that. Um, Tony's real excited to get to climb those stairs in the back. Sam, right. once you get up those stairs, <laughs> though, <laughs> and you see that Brunion Lake back there, man, that's a spectacular view. It is a man, great the older view you get, there, the harder it is for those stairs. <laughs> yeah, the, the view is amazing, you know, and then watching a the game and then at dusk or when the lights are on, it's even better. It's, it's, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, and you see some pretty big fish jumping out of the lake, right. which is great. But like, yeah. like I said, these guys here, it's like, hey, we've got a game, don't forget tomorrow. Is it on Hobbs or is it on Newt? Right. I'd really rather be on Newt. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Right, right, right. But we got great facilities here, but it does continue to uh, expand. And any plans that you can speak to? You know, in so the right, right now, Pueblo County has done a great job as far as planning. They have uh, the expansion plan uh, is, is a lot more. Uh, we had uh, another 350 build, a big baseball build. Uh, and they want to add two other small diamonds, which is really in need because that's, a huge uh, necessity, that's, that's where we need the most is the two small fields to get our baseball, our youth baseball and youth softball game, and then keep everything in house. Um, but uh, there are some constraints, you know, and uh, the town is working hard to, to try to get those accomplished. And, you know, we, we uh, believe in our commissioners and the county manager, and they're working on it all the time, you know, but it does take time. Uh, so hopefully in the near future, we're going to see some some great expansion projects here in the Sports Complex. All right, hang tight. Let me thank a few more people here in the Southern Colorado community. Dave Beamster, can't say enough about what he gives back to the community here in Southern Colorado. Little Caesars Pizza, he's got several locations in Pueblo and Pueblo West. Angeles Chapel Funeral Directors. Danetta and her team over there are just amazing people. Find them online at angelespueblo.com. Their slogan is, if you lose someone you love, call someone you can trust. And that, of course, the Angelus Chapel. Uh, Rep Union Avenue Sports Gym, one of Pueblo's premier sports gyms there in downtown Pueblo, in historic downtown Pueblo, always a part of it. And, of course, if you're watching from outside the southern Colorado area and you're thinking of coming here, there's a really cool area between Pueblo and Canyon City along Highway 50 that's absolutely gorgeous in Remax World Gorge. Uh, Peggy Ritter and her team can get you taken care of with anything real estate related. All right, so Coach, anything else that is going on here that you'd like to talk to, to us about or give us any heads up as to what's coming with uh, Runyon Sports Complex? I mean, because I mean, I know you're flat out busy because you, how much time did you get between summer sports and rolling right now into fall? Yeah, there was, there was no break. No. We, we went... <laughs> <laughs> we finished up. You know, a, a unique thing. He's going. Is that a loaded question? Yeah. <laughs> we're uh, we're do, we're offering a unique program that we, that's never been offered here, but it's called Youth T-Ball, and uh, we have four and six year olds. Uh, they're playing uh, Monday through Thursday from four to five to five to eight. So we play three ball games, and they're they're it's 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 a rush to watch those little guys, you know. But we we want to. We want to attract them at a young age and attract parents to run in sports complex. Uh, I can't say enough about what the team that we have here, you know, Mike Simmons' facilities group here, they do a great job on the fields. Um, we have a group of guys and custodians that can clean and keep this place, you know, the best we can. And those are the compliments that we get from out of town teams. Like, Man, holy cow, we didn't know about running sports complex. This is awesome. And then just 
the concession stand is top notch. It's it incredible. doesn't get any better. Uh, you, I don't know if you can. I, I would if there was a concession stand there contest. Is we would win because oh, uh, right. uh, Miss Barry, Debs Barry, and her group—they do an amazing job with uh, what what they what they offer, and then not that, but just the service after the sale. You know, depending on what you need. So we're, we're blessed to have the people in place that we have here running. Uh, but things are happening. Like I said, every night here we're going to have uh, middle school baseball, softball. Um, we talked about. Uh, Middle school softball, no baseball, but uh, and then high school softball. But we also have our fall program that's powered by Azteca, uh, and my guest Debato, he, he does a great job. And um, it was done in the past, and then COVID kind of put a damper on it, so we wanted to bring it back. Didn't know exactly how it was going to go, but uh, we uh, we're anticipating 12 to 15 players per team, so we have a 12 U, 14, 16, and 18. But we had to double up at the 16s because we had 30 plus kids. So we have two 16U teams, uh, one 18U team, and then a 12U team. But those teams will work out Monday and Wednesday. The 16s and 18s will practice skills and drills, you know, just get on their skills and get better. And then on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, they'll either be playing tournaments or we'll host some double headers here. Uh, we already have uh, Otero and Trinidad State uh, Junior Colleges scheduled to come down here and play a pod against our 18s. Uh, so it's just a benefit for our programs, for our kids. And um, so we were able to attract about 100 kids. We weren't expecting that. But we have 100 kids that are playing. Each roster has about 20 kids now, which is a little too much, but uh, I think we're, we're going to do well. With now, would you say that this was one of the better summers for those types of programs in Connie Nick baseball this year? In I'm, my eyes this year, I thought was one of the better seasons. Of I, I would totally agree with you. And you know what was amazing? That every high school that, that received a freshman this year received some quality kids. We had some really good baseball that, at the 14U level. And uh, these high schools are benefiting because they're getting some great freshmen that are going to make an impact. Whether they go to Pueblo West or Central or County, uh, it, was, it was good. It was a really fun summer. By the way, the fall team will be wearing... This is their game day hat, yeah. by the way. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, you bet, you bet. I have to get Tracy and uh, Tony one now. That's right. But, hey, uh, go ahead. let me ask a question here. Um, I, I think it's wonderful that you're getting so many kids involved. And right now you got Pueblo, as I mentioned a few moments ago, Pueblo South and uh, uh, a Holy Family plan, another game over there. You know, our teams back in the 90s and in the early 2000s were very, very dominant. They still are very good. I mean, you had South winning it in 2000. I remember I covered you guys in 07 when you uh, uh, played for a state championship. County wins it in 95 and a few others. And then Ben Garcia won it like in 12 and a bunch of uh, runner-ups there. Right, right. Talk about how the expansion up in the Denver area and even in uh, north of Colorado Springs has really affected play because you have so many people that have moved in up there. It's really challenging for our teams to compete up there more so than ever. And you're absolutely right, Tony. It's, it's really tough just because of the numbers. So um, this year, just from what I understand, Pueblo West had close to 50 athletes trying out, which is good. Uh, Pueblo County was mid-40s, so they're going to be able to offer three programs, varsity, sub-varsity, and then C school, which basically no kids left out in that right. situation. Uh, I know at Central we had 30, which was a big number for us. Uh, Centennial was a little down this year. that They're, they're, they're struggling with 15 kids, uh, but East had about 30 kids, so the programs are good here. But the difference up there is even a couple of West where they had close to 50, up at Riverdale Ridge, I talked to the coach up there, and he said they had 40, 49 varsity kids. And that was juniors and seniors. And that's still Coach Garza. Yeah, there, Coach right? Garza, Ray Garza. And then they also had, it was 80-plus uh, <laughs> as far as kids that they tried out. So they, they, they can pick. And Riverdale have, Ridge is, what, seven years old, six, yeah, seven years exactly. old? Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it has it has uh, made it a lot more competitive. Tony, that's a great question. But, mm -hmm. they, uh, you know, Pueblo does well also. And we, we're starting to get some new kids in uh, to some of the suburb areas. Uh, Centennial and Central, they're kind of landlocked on the east side. They're, they're landlocked. We don't get a lot of new kids, but you know, county does, and west does, you know, which is good. But um, we're still pretty salty up here. We compete with all those teams. You know, so I would imagine this year again, it's going to be a lot of tough competition. We're going to see some great softball. And I'm watching uh, South and uh, 
Holy Family, they're two top eight teams in the state right now. Yep. There's good softball going on. All right, anything coach, else? Yeah, yeah. Coach, uh, with your daughter taking over the program, what, what's that like? I mean, it's one thing. I mean, you've been there forever and led Central to immense success in softball, and then to pass it on and keep it in the family. I mean, I know your daughter's been part of the program for a long time, but I, what's that like as a dad? To, yeah. I mean, it's one thing to step away, but then step away and keep it in the family. Yeah, it's been good. You know, we uh, I've been there to be able to help her. You know, and I'm going to use an example. Last night, they got lightning out. You know, they get a and they said, hey, Dad, we want to play tomorrow, but we don't have a bus, we don't have umpires. Uh, so the dad card came in, and I had Barb's number from the bus transport, so I called her off, off hours. <laughs> she got us a bus, and then uh, I got two officials at 11 o'clock p.m., and we... They're up there right now playing, so, so I'm, I'm, an, I'm an asset to help her out, but also she puts a lot of time in, a lot of energy, uh, has the experience. You know, and honestly, when she applied, there were some really good candidates. I didn't know if she was going to get it, uh, but I understand she interviewed well. Uh, she has a lot of my traits, and then I was happy because now I get to go on my days off. I get to help out a little bit sure. and be part of it, you know, so um, so it's been good, you know, and then she, um, we do bump heads, I'm not going to lie to you. We, you know, we, uh, we, uh, that's just not coaching. Girl, I raised you better than that. Yeah, that's dad that's and daughter. Dad and daughter. I'm still the dad here. Yeah. And we settle, you know, we settle it out, but it's it's been good. Um, I really appreciate what she's doing for Central. And here's the ironic thing. I don't know if people know, but Charlie Manning was there for 17 years. Incredible. I was there for 18 years, so Central's only known two two managers. That's amazing. Now. You know, there's teams that go yeah. through two coaches in a season. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we, we've been very fortunate to have the people in Central that we've had, you know. And again, you have to thank administration because you can only stay that long if everything's right. working right, you know. So um, so it's been good. Been good. Love that longevity. Larry, anything else before we no, let you we get just, man, I know you we, want to get to watch this. Yeah, small. we appreciate what you do, JJ, you and Tony. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to get maybe some county officials uh, to give you some more you know, the community, it's important the community understands what's going on here. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and some timelines. So that's going to be one of my goals this Thank week you. is to try to get maybe a commissioner or two in We here. will visit them. Yeah, and then, uh, and then they, they have all the answers, and they, they know what's happening, you know. Right. So, but our community needs to know exactly what takes place. This is this is the crown jewel of Pueblo here. You know, it here. is, uh, and it so is we tradition. Have to, we have to continue to inform people and, and then provide that service that we always have been. If you speak on that, the one last thing is you travel all around with softball right, primarily. Right. And you and my daughter as well when I traveled with my son. And you see these great complexes in Denver they have twenty one fields of our sports complex or different places. But this field and running is probably one of the best in the state with what it offers. And a lot of people is everybody in this panel will probably know. Usually people want to go to a pub unless there's a funeral or they have to because I work in Springs right, right. now like once you get past the world arena it's like the earth like ends and right, you're going, right. going this big dungeon and I know and I'm sure as you're in position now I mean there's so much to offer here with Mexican food and all the traditions of Pueblo and the sports traditions to make this even a bigger marquee like you you talk about with expansion. I mean, it's it's got it's got so much. I mean, it's got so much capability. And I mean, I know you're at the mercy of what you can and can't do, and when things get built. But like this complex is absolutely amazing. Yeah, and the county's done a good job with this. You know, if, if we can't do the expansion right now, we're trying to upgrade what we already have in place. You know, I mean, we have a good thing in place, but we want to make it better. Uh, so we've had a lot of cooperation from the county. Um, you know, this this summer we had a nice event. It was the uh, RDS Cabedo Memorial Tournament, and that was a, a World Series qualifier. We had teams from California, Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, the event was amazing. And that was one of the things they talked about where, you know, the rooms were uh, competitively priced. You know, they were able to get nice rooms for under 100 bucks. Right. Uh, they, the food was amazing for them. They, they, they ate down on the Riverwalk a couple of nights, and they went to nachos and some different restaurants. And, and just, just had a blast here, you know, went over to Jai Dones because I said, hey, you had some Italian food. I said, hey, go check out Jai Dones. They came back. They were happy. So we do offer a lot, you know, and uh, like I said, it, it, we, it was a great event. You know, so. But it takes, uh, it takes a lot of people to, to make it happen, you know. And it's ironic that your sponsors that you talked about earlier, JJ, they, they have a big impact on what they do here, you know, with us also. So. Without a doubt.
Hey, well. man, Warmer, you talk about that passion. I'll make this very, very quick because I know Chelsea's arms are getting tired. You know, but uh, <laughs> that passion, here we are, summer baseball, Legion baseball, the championship game, Pueblo game, Pueblo County and Pueblo East, heavily contested baseball, umpires' calls are being questioned, the kids are going at it, the fans are into it, and then I see a fan with that passion going out to the field and giving an umpire an ear, an, an ear pull. We need security, we need security, and here's a security right here. It's like living color. Man, I'm like, this is Pueblo, so Pueblo, you know. And I need boy. to talk to the pilot like on Living Color. I am the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, you know, you wear, you wear a bunch of different hats here. You know, and when and I you came, wear them well. You wear well them. He when surely I, does. When I came out in that situation, it's more of a respect thing. You know, I said, come on, guys, we just want to play. Let's finish this. Right. Yeah. Everybody be, let's play nice and let's get this done. And they right. respected that. We Absolutely. Were able, we were able to finish it, so I appreciate that. Tony. Absolutely, man. You're my dog, man. <laughs> man. You're my dog. So that is going to do it. Larry, thank you a million no, dollars. Thank you guys. Here. Appreciate you guys. One of our other sponsors that just came on. I was just going to tell you. Gigi's Barbecue. Right. Carl and Lonnie Ellie, located on Highway 50, right across from Chick-fil-A. And I'm going to tell you what. Friday and tonight, being Saturday night, they have smoked prime rib. I think it's only like 21 bucks. And, and the food there is amazing. But they are with us, Gigi's Barbecue. And also, Rick Martinez, my man with his own roofing company there, uh, JR Roofing. We want to welcome him as well. And we have more on the way. And you know what? Chelsea, you know what? Mm. I like it fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry Romero, of course, one of our guests, and of course, head coach of the South Coast, Ryan Goddard. He's Tony Wright. That's Tracy Rink. And I'm JJ Valentine. We thank you so much for being a part of it. And uh, more to come. We'll do it again next time. Girl behind the cameras, Chelsea Lynn, and of course, you'll see her from time to time throughout as well. She's amazing. Thanks so much for talking sports from SoCoTicket.com. We'll see you next time. Nothing but love for you.